Hello everyone. This video is on section 8.5 part 2 titled Rationalizing Denominators. So in this video I'm going to be going over the a, a version of the Newton Alta assignment for section 8.5 part 2. Please understand that the version I'm going to be doing in this video, the questions I see, may or may not be exactly the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment on your own. But the objectives will be the same, the types of questions will be similar, right? what they're asking you for will be similar, and how you would go about doing them would be similar as well. So I'm hoping that watching me do these questions here will help you in some way when you work on the assignment on your own. All right, so here's the assignment page. Um, you will not see the words preview of. Right, you'll just see the title of the assignment, then the mastery bar telling you how far along you've gotten. The objectives, it looks like there are two objectives in this particular assignment. Then your questions. Now every question should have a feedback button on the bottom uh, where you can send feedback to Newton. You won't have an instructor cheat button. Don't don't look for that. That won't be there. And a you sh you should see a more instruction button right now. If you click on this, some extra reading material or videos or both will appear. And hopefully, going over that stuff will help you uh, when you're working on a certain objective. All right. So in this first question. We're asked to simplify. Now, the, the, the title of the objective is rationalize a denominator when the denominator is a monomial. Right? Monomial is a one term, right? it has one radical term. So I'm going to write this out on some paper and talk about what it means to you know, rationalize a denominator. All right. So you see this expression that we're given, 2 in the numerator divided by, and then the denominator has a radical. All right, the denominator has a radical term, right, a root symbol, a radical symbol. The square root of, you know, 17d. When you're asked to rationalize when they say rationalize the denominator, that means write an equivalent expression Write an equivalent expression that doesn't have a radical in the denominator. Right, that does not have a radical in the denominator. All right. So this is what they mean. Now when the denominator has just a single term like this, a monomial, it's really very simple. I'm going to take the expression we started with here, this 2 over the square root of 17d, and I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Right? That way we get an equivalent expression. Right? You multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. And I want to get rid of the radical in the denominator. Now, this is a square root. All right, this is a square root. <laughs> so I want to multiply by another square root so that when I multiply the radicands, I get a perfect square. All right, you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, so I'm going to multiply by the same thing on the top. 
So here I have 17 to the first. In order to get a perfect square, I need another 17. So 17 times 17, that'll be 17 squared, right, a perfect square. And then here I have d to the first. I want a perfect square, so I multiply by another d to the first. That'll make d squared, right, another perfect square. And then I do the same thing in the numerator, right? So I'm multiplying both the numerator and denominator by this square root of 17d. But look, I, again, the reason I'm doing this is so now in the numerator I have 2 times the square root of 17d divided by, and then the square root of, you know, 17 squared times d squared, right, when I multiply these two. And now I have perfect squares, right, a perfect square in the radicand of the denominator. Now be careful, right? I'm doing square roots here, so I want perfect squares. If this was a cube root, I would want perfect cubes. If this was a fourth root, I would want perfect fourth powers, and so on. Right? So just pay attention to the radical. Pay attention to what kind of root you're taking. All right, so numerator is, again, 2 times the square root of 17d. Denominator, you know, the square root of 17 squared is 17. And the square root of d squared, we're just going to write d. Okay, and the reason for that is because d can't be negative. All right. Um, it's kind of assumed here from the beginning of the expression that d has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because if d were negative, you'd be taking the square root of a negative number in the denominator, and that's not real. Oh, sorry, it can't be equal to 0, because then you'd have a denominator of 0. So d has to... So this is... We have to assume this from the beginning, right? And I should have done this from the beginning, because, like... This is what you normally do when you have expressions of variables. You try to think about what are the variable, what are the, what are the numbers I'm allowed to plug in? And you can plug in any positive number for d. That's fine. Zero is not good because I'll be have a denominator of zero. That's bad. Right? That's undefined. And negative numbers for d would be bad because remember the square root of a negative, even roots of negatives are not real. So the reason I, I don't need absolute value symbols here is because we would assume that d has to be positive from the beginning. Right? And this is what we're going to be entering. This is the same expression. Right? The, the one I started with and this one are the same expression. They're equivalent. Right? All I did, I multiplied the numerator and denominator by the same thing. But it has a rationalized denominator. Right? It has a denominator that doesn't have a radical, right? That's that's what we want to finish with, right? Denominator with you know no radical, no root symbol, all right? That's what we want. All right, so this is what I'm going to enter. Back here we have you know two times the square root of 17d in the numerator, right? and then 17d in the denominator. And nothing, no, there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator. That's as simple as that fraction gets, and I'm done. Right. Now, after every single uh, question, right, whether you get it right or wrong, there should be an answer explanation. Please read these. You know, if you got it right, you know, read through it to make sure you got it right for the right reasons, right, that you didn't just get lucky. Or maybe they did it in an alternate method that you like better, and you might want to try in future examples. Now, if you got it wrong, definitely read through the answer explanations. You know, tr try to figure out why were you wrong, where did you go wrong, and maybe you'll learn from your mistakes and, you know, use that knowledge in, in future questions. Okay. Next question. All right, so another very similar problem. Right, we're asked to rationalize a denominator when the denominator is a monomial, right? Just a single term here. It's just the square root of 48, right? There's no addition or subtraction, right? It's just a single term. 
And uh, you know, here we go. I'll write this out and we'll do it on another piece of paper. Okay. Um, now, if I were you, you know that last that last example had the square root of 17d in it. That couldn't be simplified any further. If I were you, I would before rationalizing, I would simplify radicals first. I would simplify radical. Well, this is just you don't have to, but you know I would. And just because I would doesn't mean you have to do it in this order, but I would simplify radicals first um, before rationalizing. So the square root of 48. All right. Once again, it's a square root. So I'm looking for perfect squares. Now, 16. This is 16 times 3. Right? This is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. 16 is a perfect square. That's you know, square root of 16 is 4. So this is 4 times the square root of 3. So what we have here is, you know, 8 in the numerator, and then the square root of 48, as I said, is 4 times the square root of 3. And we could even do some simplifying of this fraction right now. You know, 4 goes into 8 twice. So this is equal to 2 in the numerator divided by, and then the square root of 3 left over, right? You know, 4, you know, divide out 4 here. So 8 divided by the square root of 48 is the same as 2 divided by the square root of 3. And you can use a calculator to check that if you wish, but now comes the rationalization part, right? I have a radical in the denominator that I don't want anymore. Right? So I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by something, you know, the same thing in the numerator and denominator to get an equivalent expression that doesn't have a radical in the denominator. And this would be simple. This is a square root, so I'll multiply by another square root, uh, same in the numerator, and the square root I'm going to multiply by, you know, this is, this radicand here is 3 of the first. So I need another 3 to get 3 squared. I want perfect squares. These are square roots. So I multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. And the numerator now is 2 times the square root of 3. And the denominator is the square root of 9. The square root of 9. But that's just 3. Right? And here we go. Right? There's our final result. Rat with a rationalized denominator. right? Where the denominator you know, doesn't have a radical anymore. It's just the number three. And I leave it to you. You can use a calculator if you want. Punch this into a calculator. You know, eight divided by the square root of 48. And then punch this into a calculator. Two times the square root of three. And then divide that by three. And you'll get the same number. They're both the same expression. But this is what they want us to do, right? Write it with a rationalized denominator. All right, so we have two times the square root of three in the numerator divided by and then 3 in the denominator. Great. Yeah, so they did what I did first, you know, reduce it to 2 divided by the square root of 3 and then rationalize. Like I personally like doing that, simplifying a little bit first, simplifying radicals, simplifying fractions, and then rationalizing. All right. Now we have a problem here where we're asked to rationalize the denominator when the denominator is a binomial. Right? See, it's got two terms. See this, this fraction here? The denominator is two terms, 8 plus the square root of x. So you have 8 and the square root of x, two terms. All right. Now. The denominator, right, as I said, is a binomial. And there's a radical. So the you know, denominator is not rationalized yet. Now here's an error that people often make. Let's write the same expression over here. They're like, oh, you know, I see the square root of x down here. So I'm just going to multiply this by the square root of x. Pardon me, and then do the same to the numerator. But you got to be careful. 
there are two terms down here. If you multiply by the square root of x, right, that's going to get distributed to these two terms. And look at what the denominator will be now. The denominator will be 8 times the square root of x plus, and then the square root of x times the square root of x would just be x. Now, that radical's gone, but there's another radical. You know, still not rationalized. So, uh-oh, right? What do I do? Well, it's, it's an easy fix, okay? <clears throat> you just have to recall the following. Remember when you multiply things called binomial conjugates, when you take a plus b multiplied by a minus b, you end up with a difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. So in these cases where you have a radical, you know, a binomial with a radical in the denominator and you want to rationalize, you multiply by what it, what's called its conjugate. Multiply by the conjugate. Right? The conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. The conjugate of a minus b is a plus b. So I'm going to take this denominator and multiply it by 8 minus the square root of x. And do the same thing with the numerator. I might multiply the numerator by 8 minus the square root of x. And we'll get an equivalent statement where there's a rationalized denominator. Now, in the numerator, remember how to multiply radical expressions, right? I would distribute the 8. We'd have 64 minus 8 root x. And then I distribute the negative root x. So we have minus 8 root x minus another 8 root x. That'd be minus 16 root x. Minus 16 times the square root of x. And then negative square root of x times negative square root of x would be positive x. Right? Square root of x squared. And then once again, no, no need for absolute value symbols. Uh, you know, if we have the square root of x, x can't be a negative number anyway, because the square root of a negative number is not real. So there's the numerator, totally simplified and multiplied out. In the denominator, you have you know, a plus b times a minus b. Right? You're multiplying two conjugates. You end up with a difference of squares. This would be 8 squared, 64 minus, and then the square root of x to the second would just be x. And this is it. This is what we're entering. <laughs> right? I know you're like, oh, cancel the 64s, can you know, cancel the x's. No. Remember, you can only cancel parts of products. You can only cancel common factors. You can't cancel common terms. That's bad canceling. Right? These are terms of 64, not factors of 64. So that's it. Right? After multiplying by the conjugate there, we get a denominator without a radical. And now the denominator is rationalized. So let me enter this. All right, so the numerator has multiple terms. I'm going to put that in parentheses. We have 64 minus 16 times the square root of x, and then plus x after that all that in the numerator, and then the denominator is 64 minus x. Right. And that's it. Right. That's it. <coughs> and again, you see the conjugate of the denominator. Right. Next question. So we're in the same objective here, where we're asked to rationalize the denominator when the denominator is a binomial. We've right? got two terms, which I'm seeing here is 3 plus the square root of 19. So just like with the other one, uh, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by what's called the conjugate of the denominator, right? 3 minus the square root of 19. 
Right, so again, I got multiple terms in the denominator. In order to rationalize, I multiply by the conjugate, right, 3 minus the square root of 19. And the same with the numerator, multiplying the numerator also by the same thing, 3 minus the square root of 19. Right, so that way we have an equivalent expression. Now in the numerator, we just have to distribute this 2. Now 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, minus, and then 2 times the square root of 19 is exactly that, 2 times the square root of 19. Right? One factor is not a radical, the other factor is a radical, right? You don't put those together, don't make that the square root of 38 or anything like that. And then the denominator, as I mentioned already, when you multiply conjugates, you know, a plus b times a minus b, you'd end up with a squared minus b squared. So you have 3 squared, which is 9, minus, and then the square root of 19 squared would be 19. So we have 6 minus 2 times the square root of 19 in the numerator, and 9 minus 19 is negative 10 in the denominator. And this is great and everything, you know, the denominator is rationalized, right? There's no radical anymore, but, but, um, I can see some common factor in the numerator and denominator. We need to simplify the fraction as well. So, you know what? <clears throat> Just because I don't like having a negative in my denominators, a negative lead in the denominators, I'm going to factor out a negative 2 from the numerator. You know, both of these have a factor of 2, right? We saw earlier, I just put 2 in, now I'm taking 2 out. Uh, but instead of taking just 2 out, I'll take negative 2 out, and then you have, you know, two t negative 3 for the first term, right? Negative 2 times negative 3 would be 6, and then plus the square root of 19 for the second term. Because right, again, I factored out negative 2 and then divided by negative 10, and negative 2 you know, into negative 10 would be positive 5. So when all is totally simplified and you know, my numerator is negative 3 plus the square root of 19, and my denominator is positive 5, and there you go. All right, there's a completely simplified fraction now, right? The numerator and denominator have no more common factors and the denominator is rationalized, right? There's no more radical symbol, no more square root symbol in, in the denominator. And once again, you can start out, you know, check this by plugging in the original expression in the calculator, plug in this final expression in your calculator. Should give you the same value. All right, let's go back and enter this answer. All right, now my numerator has multiple terms, so I'm gonna put it in parentheses. We have negative three, plus the square root of 19. That's all in the numerator, divided by 5 in the denominator. Great. And again, please, now, see they kept the negative in the denominator, right? Just, you know, again, you can multiply the numerator and denominator of this by negative 1 and get exactly what I got. Right. Okay, um, or just pull the negative sign out front like they did here. Either way, it's all the same. Great. All right, now we're back to the objective where the denominator is a monomial, right? Just a single term. And once again, we have a square root. You, know, you may come across problems where there's cube roots or fourth roots. So you just you know want to multiply by something that'll give you a perfect cube or a perfect fourth root in the radicand. But with a square root, you just want to multiply by something with a you know that'll give you a perfect square in the radicand. All right, so again, pretty easy one here. Um, the radical is already simplified, right? Seven W doesn't have any perfect squares that go into it evenly that are a factor of it. So all I need to do now is to you know to rationalize the denominator, multiply by another square root, and you know I got 
7w, I just need another 7w to get a perfect square, right? To get 7 squared and w squared. And do the same to the numerator. Right? So the numerator is 3 times the square root of 7w. And the denominator would just simply be 7w. Right? The square root would be gone, right? Because you have the square root of 7w squared. And no more common factors in the numerator and denominator here. No, no radicals in the denominator. The denominator is rationalized. We're done. That's what I'm entering. So the numerator is 3 times the square root of 7w. And the denominator is just 7w. Wonderful. Okay, next question. So one more question here, where the denominator has a monomial, right, a single term. And it's another square root, so lucky, lucky me. All right, so as I've done in a previous example, um, you know, the square root of 32, I can simplify that first, simplify that radical. You know, that's the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. All right, there's a perfect square. Uh, so this is just 4 times the square root of 2. So I'll write that right now. So 3 divided by the square root of 32 is the same thing as 3 divided by and then 4 root 2. Right, 4 times the square root of 2 down here. Uh, 3 and 4 don't have any common factors, so I'm going to just rationalize now. So I want to get rid of this square root of 2 in the denominator. So I just multiply by another square root of 2, right? That'll make the square root of 4, which is just 2, and then the the radical will be gone. And if I'm multiplying the denominator by the square root of 2, I must also multiply the numerator by the square root of 2. So in the numerator I have 3 uh, times the square root of 2 and in the denominator, you have 4 times 2. Right? Remember, these two will make 2, and then 4 times 2 is 8. You know, don't forget that factor of 4 that's still down there. So square root of 2 times square root of 2, that'd be 2, and then times 4 would be 8. And there we go. The numerator and denominator have no common factors. The denominator doesn't have a radical anymore. Rationalized, right? And there you go, that's what they want. So 3 times the square root of 2, um, then divided by 8 is what I'm going to be entering. 3 times the square root of 2 divided by 8. Wonderful. Alright, so that objective where there was a monomial in the denominator is done. Uh, the last two questions I'm going to look at should have a binomial in the denominator. And remember what I said about the binomials, right? If there's a binomial with a radical in the denominator and you're asked to rationalize, you multiply by its conjugate, which just means switch that sign in the middle. All right, so let's write this out and do it on some paper. All right, so again, I take the denominator here and multiply, you know, this whole denominator by its conjugate, the square root of 38 minus the square root of d, and do the same to the numerator, right? Multiply the entire numerator by the square root of 38 minus the square root of d. All right, now in the numerator, I got some distributing to do. All right. So on the numerator, you know, the square root of 38 distributed got square root of 38 times square root of 38, that'd be 38. And then square root of 38 times negative square root of d. Well, those are both square roots, so I can put them together. That'd be the square root of 38d. But I'd have two of those you know, after distributing the negative d. So I have minus 2 times the square root of 38d. And then finally, negative root d times negative root d would be positive d, right, just plus d. 
And that's it. None of those terms go together. Right, that's as simple as the numerator gets. And the denominator, we're multiplying conjugates, so we end up with a difference of squares. Right, so square root of 38 squared, that'd be 38, minus the square root of d squared, that would just be d. And that's it right here. Nothing simplifier, nothing simpler than that. And once again, don't do the bad canceling. Like, oh, the 38 should cancel, the D should cancel. No, no, they're not parts of a product. They're parts of a sum or a difference. You can't cancel common terms. You can only cancel common factors. So this is what I'm entering right here. The denominator is rationalized, no more radical. Right, so the numerator has multiple terms, right? So I'm going to put it in parentheses. We have 38 minus 2 times the square root of 38d. Make sure that's all in the radical there. And then outside the radical plus d. Divided by and then 38 minus d in the denominator. Okay. <coughs> Wonderful. And again, please read through the, you know, oh, they, you know what, they leave as 38 minus the uh, square root of 38 minus the square root of d in parentheses squared, because, you know, that's what it is, which is totally, I guess that's totally fine. I mean, I, I actually multiplied it out, but, you know, they left it as a square, the same factor twice, so nothing wrong with that either. All right, then the last question should be similar. All right, we got a denominator with multiple terms, two terms, a binomial with a radical, and I'm asked to rationalize, you know, rewrite it as an equivalent expression without this radical down here. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. All right, so once again, you know, the denominator, multiply all that by its conjugate, which would be 3 plus the square root of 22. And I do the same to the numerator. The whole numerator times 3 plus the square root of 22. Right, multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Now in the numerator, you know, I'd be distributing the 3. So that'll give me 9 plus, and then 3 root 22. But then when I distribute the square root of 22, I'll have another 3 root 22. So it'll be 6 root 22 after combining like terms, like radicals. And then plus 22, right? The square root of 22 times the square root of 22. And we can simplify this to 31 plus 6 times the square root of 22. And then in the denominator, we've got, you know, multiplying conjugates, we've got a difference of squares. 3 squared is 9 minus, and then 22, square root of 22 squared is 22. Alright, so in the numerator, we have 31 plus 6 divided by uh, times the square root of 22 combining the, the constants, and then 9 minus 22 be negative 13. And this is all fine. All right, this is great. You know, the denominator doesn't have a radical anymore. Uh, but you could also pull that negative 1 factor out in front of the fraction here, negative 1 times, and then the fraction 31 plus 6 times the square root of 22 all over 13. Uh, or you could put the negative 1 factor in the numerator and make that negative 31 minus 6 root 22 all over 13. All three of these are the same thing. Right? They're all the same. I'll just put that first one in with the negative denominator. It doesn't matter as long as the denominator doesn't have a radical anymore. And also as long as the numerator and denominator don't have any common factors, you should be done. All right, so the numerator has multiple terms. I'll put it in parentheses. We have 31 plus 6 times the square root of 22. And then in the denominator, you know, negative 13. And this should be acceptable. Wonderful. And once again, you know, please read through the answer explanations. And again, it looks like they just took that as, you know, 3 plus the square root of 22 squared in the numerator. I actually multiplied it out and got, you know, 31 plus 6 root 22, same thing. And that should be it for this assignment. As I said at the top of the video, right, the, the questions I saw uh, in this video may not be the same questions you see when you work on the assignment on your own. 
but the objectives are the same, the types of questions are similar, how you're going to do them will be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me go over these eight questions here help you out in some way when you're working on the assignment by yourself. And thanks for watching.